Imagine studying the most difficult concept that you thought under 10 minutes. Yes, you heard me right because today I'm going to teach you lac operon under 10 minutes and knowing that molecular basis is a very long chapter and lac operon itself can give you more than 4 marks. I am Ms. Gopika, your biology master teacher. So today we are going to learn lac operon concept. Now what is this lac operon concept? Before I go into the concept students, you have to understand that there are two types of genes. First gene is called as the housekeeping gene or the constitutive gene and the second gene is called as your luxury gene or non-constitutive gene or regulated gene. Many names they have. From the name itself you can understand housekeeping gene. How does a housekeeper work? All the time of the day, right? Same way housekeeping genes does not get switched off. They are continuously working. But at the same time if you see the luxury genes from the name itself you understand they get to take breaks. That is they switch off whenever they need and switch on whenever it's needed. Again, lot of other conditions are there, but this is generally how the genes are. One gene which continuously works, which is called the housekeeping gene, and the other gene which works only when it is needed and not needed, it will not work. So that gene is called as a luxury gene. But ma'am, when do they actually get switched off? Now you have to understand, in eukaryotes, we have four places where the gene can decide to discontinue or switch off. That is, first during the transcription. During the transcription, the, the gene can decide to switch off. During RNA processing, that means when I'm doing tailing and capping of the mRNA, I can definitely, the gene can definitely switch off. The second one is when I transfer the mRNA from the nucleus to the cytoplasm because next for translation to happen, this mRNA has to go out. During that time also, the gene can decide to switch off. Now, last one is obviously translation. But what about prokaryotes? Since prokaryotes are very simple organism and they have polycystronic gene, that means one gene will code for multiple proteins and it's it's not like us. It's not like one DNA, one mRNA, one protein. We are monocystronic, but prokaryotes are polycystronic. So here you can see in prokaryotes, the main thing is that after transcription, it will be continuing with translation. Like in eukaryotes, RNA processing is not happening in prokaryotes because they are a simpler organisms. So they are coupled. That is your transcription, translation are coupled reaction. So the gene can decide to switch off during transcription. And this was found by operon. That is, uh, it was called the operon model by Jacob and Monad when they were working and they noticed that many genes are there and all of them are regulated by two people. Let's see who is that. So students, when you learn about your lac operon concept, there are some things that you have to know or generally about an operon model. You have to know that there is a promoter region where the RNA polymerase will be able to bind. Where RNA polymerase will be like, okay, this is where I have to start, right? And then we have a regulator. This is the main portion. This is the main person who is controlling everything, right? This fellow is going to form a protein, which is called the repressor protein. In your lac operon, you will see it. So this regulatory protein or regulator will form a protein and operator. This this regulator that formed the protein, no, that protein will go and bind with this operator. Okay, so protein will bind to this structural gene to regulate the action. Different kind of actions will be done by each of the structural genes, which we'll learn again and further in the class. Now, students understand there is only lac operon for you to study, but there are lot other operons like your valine operon, TRP operon, many other operons. But luckily, you only have lac operon. So let's learn lac operon now. So, students, from the name lac, you understand it is something to do with lactose, right? Now, lac operon concept goes with like this, PIPO ZYA, this is how I remember it, P-I-P-O-Z-Y-A. Now, who are these people? Very simple, your ZYA are the structural genes that we were talking about. Each of them will release some enzymes and they are going to do some functions. First of all, beta-galactosidase. This beta-galactosidase will break down lactose into galactose and your glucose. Now, understand, very simple. We are talking about a prokaryotic, you know, we are talking about a prokaryotic bacteria. And in a prokaryotic bacteria, when glucose is more, why will they need lactose? They will not need lactose, right? But imagine glucose is less and the surrounding has lactose. Definitely E. coli will take it in so that the gene gets switched on. So here, same thing happens. This beta-galactosidase will do the job of breaking down lactose into galactose and glucose. Permeas will do the job of increasing the permeability of the cell wall so that E. coli can take in more lactose. And transacetylase, as such, no uh, function is mentioned in your NCRT, but it enhances this beta-galactosidase function. Now, 
Look here, students. This is the main person called the regulatory gene. From the name itself, you understand. Regulation they are going to do. They are going to control something, right? This fellow is a housekeeping gene. That means he has to be switched on all the time and he is going to continuously form repressor mRNA and repressor protein. So, I gene, that is your lac I, is going to form an active repressor. Now, let's see what is this repressor going to do. Now, students understand, it's a very, very simple concept. If lactose is absent, imagine the surrounding does not have any lactose and even the E. coli does not want any lactose, okay, because it has enough glucose, enough energy is there, life is happy and chill pill, no tension. But imagine lactose is absent, what is exactly going to happen? See, PIPO, okay, promoter is there where the RNA polymerase will come and bind. Now, this I gene is going to form repressor mRNA. That repressor mRNA is going to form repressor protein according to your central dogma. This repressor protein has a site to go and bind with the operator. So, this fellow will go and bind with the operator. Now, who is going to be sad? RNA polymerase who came for transcription, right? RNA polymerase will be blocked. Right? It cannot move further. Imagine a full block is there in the road. Can you jump over it? No, you cannot. You have to wait. Right? Same way, RNA polymerase will be like, okay, it's over for me because the gene got switched off. So, when lactose is absent, the gene will be switched off leading to a negative regulation. So, this we will call it as negative regulation. If something is off, we tell it's negative, right? Negative regulation. Now, how do I switch on this gene? How do I make this genes active? Simple thing. Imagine glucose is less, lactose is present in the outside surrounding. That time, you have to understand that the I gene is still going to form repressor mRNA. It is still going to form repressor protein. But here the catch is, here we have the hero that is lactose. Lactose is present. So it will not allow this repressor to go and bind with the operator. Instead, this lactose will act as an inducer and go and bind with the repressor protein. This way, the repressor protein will not be able to go and bind with the operator. Imagine a big person comes and hugs you and not let you move. Same thing is going to happen, no? So inducer will go and bind with the repressor and not allow this repressor protein to go to the operator. Now, who is going to be happy? Obviously, if there is no block, then speeding is going to happen. RNA polymerase is very happy because it can continue its transcription. As RNA polymerase moves further, your structural genes also get a job and they get active and they release beta galactosidase, which is going to break down lactose to galactose and glucose. And permease who is going to increase the permeability of the cell and you have transacetylase which will enhance the activity of beta galactosidase. Here the situation is when lactose is present the gene is going to be switched on and because of which this is going to be a positive regulation. Now please understand ma'am here the genes are working but from where did lactose behave as an inducer? This is a leaky model. Lactose has entered through some way which uh, Jacob and Monard is definitely not able to tell it in the textbook as well. That is because it's a leaky model. That is lactose is entered and that is the reason why this whole thing has happened. Later, lactose will be absorbed more because of your permease. So please do understand it's a leaky model. Somewhere there is a leak and that's the reason why lactose enters. So this will lead to a negative and a positive regulation. Negative regulation is when the switch is off. Positive regulation is when the switch is on. Now students, from this you will be able to understand that lac operon concept actually is very simple. Lactose is absent, switch is off. That is Repressor protein will go and bind with the operator. Now, when lactose is present, switches on, that means repressor protein will not go and bind with the operator because the inducer is going to bind with the repressor protein. And because of it, structural genes is going to release beta galactosidase, permease, transacetylase, and they are going to continue their functions. So, this is all about your lac operon concept. So, it's a very simple concept. All you have to remember is who found it. Your Jacob and Bernard, what is the actual story? It is basically when lactose is present, what is going to happen to the gene? When lactose is absent, what is happening to the gene? And when does a gene actually think of switching off and switching on during which are the steps it happens? Eukaryotes, it's a little complex because we have monocystronic gene. That's why you do not have to study about eukaryotes. You only have to study about prokaryotes. So I hope this video was really, really helpful. Definitely let me know in the comments if you want such videos. Thank you so much for joining. See you all. After this class, definitely go back and read your NCRT to get a thorough understanding and to build your foundation well and score full marks. So see you all in the next class. Let me know in the comments if you want such, such, such sessions and also let me know which are the topics that you want. Same, under 10 minutes. Okay, see you all. Next class, Tata. Bye-bye.